My name is Colin Harrison. Um, I'm Emeritus Professor in the University of Nottingham in the United Kingdom. And uh, I'm very interested in the area of uh, literacy in relation to technology. Um, partly because I've been interested in technology and computers uh, for literacy development since 1980. Um, partly also because I've been involved with a number of national projects in my country that have looked at how schools and children and teachers are using new technologies, what they're learning and uh, what we can learn from the uh, schools that are in the vanguard and also what we can learn from schools that everyone thinks are in the vanguard but maybe aren't. Um, uh, if you look at my first slide uh, you'll see that um, I've got uh, the title uh, Word Liter the Web Literacy Map, I Know Where You've Been, I Know Where You're Going and that will indicate to you straight away that uh, I'm wanting to um, hold with a perspective that uh, interrogates the relationship between individuals and the internet, what the internet knows about us and what we know about the internet. And I've got three images there. One is from the web literacy map, one is a map of the internet, and the third one is uh, a map of the world, indicating, uh, as it happens, uh, the coverage of a particular program that I've been involved in uh, and just illustrating how within one year a, a program can be used uh, uh, that's very significant all over the world. Uh, on my next slide um, I'm going to uh, draw attention to uh, the web literacy map uh, that our colleagues at Mozilla have brought together. First thing I want to say is that I commend them. I, I think it's a, a very laudable initiative um, to try and uh, define web literacy, what the skills and competencies are that, uh, that are needed. Um, I also want to say that I see this as um, uh, a web developer's view and I want to suggest that um, a, a teacher and literacy specialist uh, might have a rather different uh, perspective and, and I hope our colleagues at Mozilla uh, will take account of that. And, and I hope that uh, those of you who are listening to this presentation will also take account of it. But I do think it's important to say what skills do people need to have. Building, remixing and so on, all of those things are very important. Um, on the uh, next slide you can see uh, something of uh, a subset of those skills, very important subset. Um, the importance of connecting, sharing, collaborating, of community participation and of privacy and those are areas of course that uh, in schools we give uh, a tremendous amount of uh, attention to. Um, but I want to go a little bit further than that in saying not just what are the skills but how do we understand what the internet is doing for us and to us. Um, the next slide shows uh, an image that's uh, Oh shoot, have I turned the microphone off? No, no, you're good. Okay, um, uh, I was just clicking on the wrong screen. This is a very well known uh, image. It's actually a picture, a representation of the ways uh, in, in which the internet interconnects. Uh, and I've been told the red areas are military. And of course that was the way in which the uh, internet was first set up. As we scroll across uh, and you see uh, some questions that I'm posing. Um, the first one is, um, what is the role of the internet? Um, is it uh, to keep us safe? Initially, uh, 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 as the next slide says, uh, that's what it was. It was, uh, as, as you all know, um, a military initiative uh, whose goal was to keep communications going uh, in the event of a nuclear war or other uh, major catastrophe. Um, uh, the, the next most obvious answer to the question what's the role of the internet is to say it's to give me data. Um, the internet offers uh, 25 billion pages of data and so uh, it's a, a, ma a massive uh, and uh, unforeseen amount of resource for us. Um, but what about the question is the job of the internet to sell me data? 
Well, it quite often is. Uh, my students who are doing uh, online masters um, uh, get very frustrated uh, when they go to Google Scholar and find just the article they want and uh, it, uh, when they click on can I see the PDF it says certainly you may uh, uh, you can have it for 24 hours for a mere $36 and so a lot of what the internet is doing is selling me data but one of the other concerns that we have is that it's selling data about us and as you all know um, uh, the, the reason uh, Google and Facebook have made people multimillionaires is because uh, they sell data uh, on what we're interested in to other parties and so in a sense they're selling us um, I used to think the job of television was to entertain that's what the BBC says it's attempting to do uh, to entertain and to educate but um, people in television have said that's a very naive view the job of television is to sell audiences and um, uh, in that in that respect we are the commodity and so in saying what is it to understand the internet uh, we need to ask ourselves those questions I'm showing you a picture of um, uh, part of my Facebook page um, and uh, I was unhappy when I saw this page um, as you can see on the top right hand side um, is an invitation to click on uh, a site called um, a businessconcast.com I don't know anything about that company um, but it's asking me if I want uh, faster internet why did it know that I wanted faster internet did it know that um, a week before I'd done a broadband speed test on my machine well I had done that uh, did that information then trigger that advertisement um, seven years ago I got divorced um, and I don't show um, anything about my personal relationships I don't show that I'm in a relationship I choose not to um, on Facebook and is that why I get invitations to browse thousands of local single women I find it offensive that I get that invitation I didn't choose to do it I found out more about how to control those advertisements I now get generic advertisements but um, I had to do quite a lot of uh, detective work before I discovered that it was possible to uh, change personalized advertisements that I hadn't chosen to ask for uh, to generic ones so what's happening there is that the internet is taking data I haven't chosen to give it um, or at least I haven't willfully chosen to give it and um, it's determining what data I get um, it's selling me um, as we go on um, I uh, ask the question um, uh, who told Facebook those questions uh, and uh, if we uh, move on from there again um, we can uh, ask um, other questions where does Doug Belshaw live um, what's the best pub there what does his study look like um, I haven't asked him those questions um, but um, I've done a little bit of digging on the internet and there is the plow um, in a small village in the north of England uh, which was uh, the best pub uh, in his village there's a photo of his study uh, which he, he shared on one occasion um, he says it's no tidier now uh, even though um, uh, he's uh, he moved house <laughs> um, the point I'm making is that we get a lot of uh, opportunities to find out about other people from the internet um, and so critical internet literacy is not just about being able to build a site or read a screen it's, it's um, a more complex matter than that and it involves um, looking at the production of information and the reception of information many of you will know about the Pacific Northwest tree octopus um, it's a spoof site most adults can find out in about 30 seconds uh, that it is a spoof site but kids are um, uh, are fooled and they're fooled for longer um, I want to suggest that we don't know anywhere near as much as we need to about critical internet literacy and I don't think that so far the Mozilla 
uh, uh, web literacy site says anything like as much as it could about what it would be to develop critical internet literacy. Um, supposing you say to children, well, ask yourself uh, where, uh, who owns that site? Um, uh, how many kids age 11 are able to use that information? Um, uh, many of you will know that there's um, a site called martinlutherking.com which isn't about Martin Luther King, it's about trying to destroy uh, the image of Martin Luther King and it's uh, produced by and run by uh, an American white supremacist group called Stormfront. Um, uh, it takes about five clicks to discover that uh, if you know where to look and Stormfront don't hide that information, uh, they, they make it available if you choose to look carefully. But um, what would um, an average 11-year-old American make of that information? What would they know if they saw the word stored in front? What do they know about white supremacist groups? Um, the point I'm making here is that it's not enough to simply say children need to interrogate who owns a website. There's a massive amount of critical uh, and intelligent background knowledge needed to understand the internet, to understand what it's trying to do, who owns the information and how we can use it. It's not a matter of simply alerting kids to the fact that an internet source might be unreliable. Um, we know from research that was carried out um, uh, by Alan Markman in the, in the 1980s that um, the average kid, a good reader, age 11, is not very good at detecting and responding to inconsistencies in a, in, uh, a text. Um, how much more difficult is it therefore to uh, understand inconsistencies on the internet when you're comparing information across potentially dozens of sites? The, my answer is that it's very, very difficult and therefore what I'm calling critical internet literacy is something that needs to be taught very early on and needs to be an important part of uh, web literacy. So I'm not saying that Mozilla have got it wrong, but rather that we as teachers have work still to do uh, in order to be uh, more aware uh, of, 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 first of all, uh, who benefits uh, if I don't have critical internet literacy? Uh, and that's the question on, on my next slide. Um, and the answer is that uh, some of those uh, Commercial websites will benefit commercially um, and uh, other sites that want to mask information or withhold information may also be benefiting. Um, on the uh, information sheet uh, on the page from uh, our colleagues at Mozilla, uh, they say privacy, examining the consequences of sharing data online, um, those are very important issues. Uh, these are only presented by Mozilla, I think, in a very sketchy way. Um, on my next slide, I show um, a, uh, a, a group um, called Media Smarts, Canada's Centre for Digital and Media Literacy. And uh, uh, clearly, you can uh, put the term Media Smarts into Google and, and go there. Um, I think they've done um, a really uh, excellent. Uh, uh, job, certainly excellent preliminary job in saying in more detail what is it that uh, kids and internet users uh, who include children need to know about. Um, strategies for conducting self-directed online research, um, issues connected with file sharing, sharing information. Uh, yes, copyright infringement uh, is a massive issue uh, but also unintended sharing of information. The concept of anonymity, it's very difficult to be anonymous, um, uh, as, uh, as, as many of us know. What is responsibility? What are our responsibilities? What is citizenship on the internet? Um, lots of good questions there, and finding out also, at uh, the bottom there, uh, uh, what are the passive ways in which we uh, give out information about ourselves um, and what are the more aggressive ways in which uh, information about us is, is uh, collected. 
Uh, the final point is minimizing exposure to adult websites. What I've found is that kids um, are very often uh, very good at policing themselves. Um, in research we did uh, in which we asked children to interview each other, 14 year olds, um, the uh, issues of bad material uh, and pornography weren't their major concerns. Um, when they talked about issues that uh, caused um, anxiety or concern within their families, it was often uh, much more to do with who has the bandwidth, who has the control, who's showing, who's trying to watch um, uh, movies or TV programs they've missed and as a result is using up all the bandwidth in the house. The concern of children is very often um, about fairness and justice um, uh, rather than uh, about uh, accessing inappropriate material. Um, uh, one of the um, things I discovered when I was uh, leading a national project looking at how kids use the internet in school is that uh, nearly all the attempts to bypass the filters on school internet servers um, uh, but from children are purely in order to get into social media uh, and talk to each other. Um, and one of the national leaders um, of uh, the uh, a major broadband provider for schools said uh, the only uh, major concerns about uh, inappropriate use um, are from teachers. So uh, we need to cons be concerned about those. We know that child safety is massively important and that uh, it can be compromised on the internet. But uh, uh, I, I think that media smarts have got a very good uh, starting point for ways of looking at um, headline curriculum for uh, digital uh, literacy. So uh, uh, that's um, uh, raises my final question, uh, who's going to teach critical internet literacy? Um, and uh, there's there a lot of issues there um, uh, and uh, my belief is that uh, it's going to be all teachers and all parents. Um, it's rather like um, uh, the difference between uh, teaching reading, uh, which a, a, a reading specialist will know all about um, in kindergarten, uh, but uh, to acknowledge at the same time that a child's been learning to read from birth. Their, their language development um, is, we now know, um, in, in some important respects, 90% 90, 90 complete by the age of one. Uh, the most critical building blocks of understanding language are in place by the end of the first year of life. And, and those things are going to determine literacy. So the role of parents, uh, the role of peers, uh, the role of teachers um, and those uh, uh, carers who are, are beyond school um, all have a role to play in developing critical internet literacy. And it's not in everyone's interest um, for, every, for children to have critical internet literacy. If the job of uh, television is to sell audiences, if the job of the internet is to sell information, uh, we need to understand that, we need to be critically aware of it. And um, I think uh, we can expect there to be some conflicts of interest with some internet providers uh, between their role of uh, having a critical and well-informed uh, internet use population um, and their job of uh, selling information. So we need to be aware of those things. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's pretty well uh, where we can wrap up. Um, what we need are consumer protection champions to help us better understand who's using us on the internet, who owns us, and who's selling our information, who's selling us. Thank you very much.